Okay, so we're now ready to talk about the, the independence of irrelevant alternatives, okay? And, and this is a, this is an, a, it's a, in a restriction on a property uh, on the logit model that restricts the substitution patterns between different uh, alternatives when you are changing the attributes or adding alternatives. Okay, and we just saw that the, on, on that elasticity that we, we, we have the effect that when we're changing the attribute of alternative K, basically it changes the demand for all other goods in a proportional way by the same per, per percentage, okay? We sometimes call it proportional substitution patterns, but it's really also an, a, a, um, um, another illustration of what we'll talk about now, namely the independence of irrelevant alternatives. And what you can see it really clearly, if you divide two um, very easily, if you divide the two probabilities from two alternatives with each other, so let's consider two alternatives, J and K, um, then you, you essentially just you know put two logic formulas on top of each other. The only thing that's that's different, well, that's the that's basically the uh, uh, utility for 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 the uh, for the ut utility for for the um, alternative that's under consideration. So so J in this case and, and K in this case, but but the denominator is the same. It's going to cancel out, and you get this. Stuff. And then you see here is that the ratio of those two pro uh, uh, probabilities does not depend on any of the remaining alternatives. So if I consider, say, uh, if I consider, for example, uh, the relative the relative probability of choosing uh, between uh, you know a, a, a Lamborghini and a um, what's another nice car, uh, a Ferrari, then that's uh, not affected by uh, the, the, any attributes of any other cars. Okay. Maybe, that's, uh, maybe that's reasonable uh, in that case, but what, what about if we look at the um, uh, ratio between a Lamborghini and a Fiat, right? Then maybe it's, 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 uh, it's not so uh, obvious when we are looking at the ratio between two very different alternatives that then maybe they're gonna be more sensitive that ratio to if I change say the price of something that's very competitive to that small car, okay? Because Lamborghini owners, they don't care about what the price of a Fiat Punto is, right? So uh, maybe that's restrict substitution pattern is not that realistic. At least you can see kind of uh, a little bit uh, um, stuff is going on. So here's a very clear example. Very classic example is called the red bus, blue bus example. It's due to, uh, I think it's actually due to De Bruyne, but some people cite McFadden for it. I think both deserve the highest honor. So let's just honor them both. And, 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 and I apologize for not actually knowing. Um, anyway, assume two ways, probably they're both, uh, um, yeah, anyway, uh, assume two, two ways of commuting red bus or, 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 or commuting is, is red bus or car, okay? So you can choose between, between these two different ways of getting the work. And then um, they're equally likely, people are close to being different. So the probability here in the simple stylized example is that they're both equal to one half, okay? There's only these two options. No other options of get, going to work. You can't walk, you have to take the red bus or the car, okay? Equally likely means 0 0.5, both of them, the odds ratio is one. Now add a blue bus to the choice set. Okay, now we, we completely parallel routes and there were no problems with congestions or people smelling or anything. No, nothing has changed in the already existing red bus. You like it as much as before, okay? It's, it's identical except for the color, okay? Um, now the new problem is the following. Well, we would like to say that the probability of taking the blue bus and the red bus is the same. They're, they're identical buses. There are essentially no, um, there is no, there's no way that, uh, you know, based on what we have of observables that they would imply different probabilities. Okay. We can calculate the ratio between the red bus and, and the, our car that was one that must hold because of IAA that was the same as we as we started assuming, 
okay? That, that must hold because remember, we just added an irrelevant alternatives and not, none of the attributes of the blue bus is gonna affect this difference, okay? So it must not have changed, okay? So this still holds because of IA, because of the independence of irrelevant alternatives. Well, then the probable is must sum to one, right? So this means that something after this new alternative is equally popular as the red bus has arrived then some of the probabilities may change, that's intuitive. Then the question is, how do they change? Well, you, there's really only one solution. All these probabilities, they must be the same. Uh, and then that's, that's, that's equal to one third. Otherwise, you can't have it maintain the, the IIA, right? Um, if you suddenly start taking more from one alternative to compare to another, uh, this ratio will change. So there's one solution to this problem all probabilities are equal to one third. Well, see, we would expect, we would expect that the probability of the car is unchanged, or at least it's not changed as much as that for the bus, okay? We would change, expect that to be unchanged, but then the, the, the market shares of the other 50% that took the bus who would be indifferent between whether what the color is, is just, you know, uh, or divided equally between the two colors of buses. And, and so this would be kind of, you know, the intuitive prediction, but this is the prediction from the logit model and is implied by this independence of irrelevant alternatives. Of course, I mean, this is in a very simple example where we're not trying to control for any, you know, uh, substitution patterns implied by observables, okay? Um, that may be correlated across the different alternatives. You suddenly, you know, or maybe that what, but 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 if you just just because of those unservable components of utility, this is the implication. And where is it coming from? It's coming from the fact that we're assuming that those epsilons they are independent across alternatives. It's not like the bus or uh, epsilons are more correlated or, or closer to each other than than the car epsilon, which would be intuitive, right? I mean, we would expect the. It's almost like we would expect them to be the same. Um, so, <clears throat> so that's a very intuitive, uh, counterintuitive example. Okay. Now here's another example. It's a, it's a car. Okay. So assume we, we, uh, you know, we're looking at cars again, attributes have X uh, or, or uh, two attributes, price and size. And then we assume we hold the price, the, the size constant, but then there's suddenly a, a price increase of car J. Okay. So that, like the last car. So that increases by, by, by Delta. And then what you get is that the new probability um, after in the counterfactual in the new regime with higher delta, that's going to be, we just add uh, delta um, a beta here because now the price has increased and we can put that outside. Okay? And then really what you can see is if you compare this to the original probability before uh, at the old set of prices, it's going to be one over uh, rho here where rho is really the, 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 where the logger row measures the relative change in the consumer uh, surplus uh, after the price change. And, and see, this is gonna be the same across all the different, all the different cho cho choices, K, they are affected in the same proportion. I mean, this is another way of saying that these elasticities here are not depending on J, that all the, the demand is changing with the same proportion for all of, uh, for, for, for all other goods when you change the price of alternative J, um, or alternative K. Uh, so it's, it's just it's the same way of saying the same thing. The bottom line is you got these proportional substitution patterns that are implied by logit and, and give this unfortunate independence of irrelevant alternatives uh, that, that has the effect if you add more alter alternatives that are irrelevant to the comparison between two Existing alternatives, it doesn't change the relative rate rating between them. Okay, so we are done. And basically, uh, just you know, summing up and giving us a few concluding remarks. The IAA assumption that comes from the independence of the errors. And uh, the independence of the errors is, is really something that was required to build the con you know, conditional multinomial mixed logic model, conditional choice probabilities that we could obtain in closed forms. The same with the social the social welfare function or the 
expected max of, of the utility. That was also something we got in close form from that assumption. That's very nice. It's very convenient. But it has a cost in terms of the realism of some of the predictions of the model. That is really something that is important once you start you know, looking at, at, uh, at choice sets where there are some choices that are grouped into to groups that are very different from other alternatives, like you know, um, the red bus, blue bus, and car example. That's like one group or another group. There, you would do something like a nested mo model. That's what we're going to talk about later. Okay, so there you would first there will be a nest where you make a decision, bus or car. Okay, and then after that, if then you took the car, well, there's no more choices to make. But then if you took the bus, you have to choose color. Okay, and that that's that's what we do to allow correlations within group of alternatives, so that the basically the the I the extreme value shock no longer I extreme value, but but they are allowed to be correlated between red and blue buses, right? Because they're very similar alternatives, okay? In terms of the unobserved component of utility. That's, that's, a, that's, that's still giving closed form solution in the so-called nested logic model, but then you have to specify prehand what that correlation is. There is, there is something called the multinomial probit that it requires us to simulate the, the probabilities and solve you know, high dimensional integrals potentially but on the other hand, it does allow for realistic, more realistic substitution patterns. Okay, and that's, that's where you can use Monte Carlo to simulate those. You can also also something called the random coefficient logit or what Train calls the, the mixed logit model and various other uh, formulations for the epsilons where you can really do different, uh, different types of, of models. Uh, also, you can uh, allow for random taste variation in, in different or attributes, so maybe not everybody in the sample has the same price response. So let's take an example here. Here's a model here. You can allow these coefficients to vary in the population, and and uh, you could do that in the, in in the in the logic model. You could do that in a deterministic way. Say, okay, the price response depends, for example, of income, and then you specify how that coefficient depends on income. Maybe that coefficient is you know, like a constant plus uh, another coefficient times income. Then you got taste variation. Different people have different price responses. You can still do that in logit, but if you want that to be random, to be randomly distributed in the population and captured by some error term that allow for that flexibility, well, then you have to do a random coefficients model. And and I think, um, well, I, I I just think it's useful sometimes to also see say to you guys what is ahead, right? So uh, maybe we're not we're just still do, doing the logit model, but you have to do something first. And then we'll try to do something uh, more sophisticated in the longer run. Um, so yeah, have fun. Um, I think it's it's time to stop. Uh, next time will be potentially about nestle Bye bye.